My psoriasis first appeared on my scalp um, and it then uh, came up on other parts of my body. Um, the usual thing happened that I fell over, had a scab and the scab didn't disappear on my knee, it turned into a piece of psoriasis and from there it uh, spread out to most of the rest of my body. The psoriasis first appeared when I was about seven years old. Uh, I was a boy and just realised that I had a small patch of red, reddened skin on my lower leg. Uh, I didn't know at that time what it was, I just knew that it was there and it wouldn't go away. And uh, shortly after that my mother took me to, the, to my GP and, said, and it was from there that it became apparent it was more than just a, a blemish, it was something different. My psoriasis first appeared uh, when I was eight years old and I remember I was in third grade and it just started off from my legs, it was a small blood and I just didn't notice it and just it went on increasing and within three, four months my entire body was involved. Psoriasis is one of the most common skin disorders known today. It affects 1 in 50 of the world's population, roughly 125 million people. There are several different types of psoriasis, but it usually appears in the form of patches of silvery scales on areas of reddened skin. These scales can be scratched off and tend to shed easily. The most common areas where these patches, or plaques as they are known, occur are the scalp, lower back, elbows and knees, but they can also affect other regions of the body. Psoriasis is a really common skin condition that affects about 2% of the population, which means that in England alone there's about half a million people who have psoriasis. And that means that if a patient has psoriasis and they step on a double-decker bus in London, for example, it's likely that there is somebody else on that bus who also has psoriasis. It was my parents who noticed it first when they were washing my, uh, washing my hair and uh, they didn't know what it was and at the time at school it was usual to have your hair examined every so often by the knit nurse. So during one of the examinations, first of all she thought it was cradle cap and then the next trip she thought it was eczema and then the next trip admitted she had no idea what it was. Um, so I was taken off to see the GP. He was fairly sure it was psoriasis, at least he recognised it straight away. Um, and recommend that I see a dermatologist. I think the uh, main, main effect of psoriasis as a teenager is, you know, it just wasn't very nice really. It was uh, having these odd bits of, bits of uh, areas of, of my body which were affected and, you know, people looking and being very, very self-conscious. I think, you know, as a teenager, many people are self-conscious at the idea of a, of a single spot on a, on, on a cheek or something. And this was, uh, you know, these, these odd areas, I say, on my elbow and my knees. Uh, particularly were, were just not very nice and people were looking and you know I became a bit self-conscious about them really. Psoriasis is what is referred to as a waxing and waning disorder which means that there are times when the condition seems to be clearing up only for it to return with a vengeance at a later date. The condition varies from sufferer to sufferer. Some people only ever seem to have a few psoriatic patches while others are subjected to more than one form of psoriasis and experience widespread eruptions. What patients often find is the most debilitating factor in their psoriasis is their embarrassment and their sense of confidence and self-esteem, which is really impaired by knowing that they have psoriasis. And that can affect how they interact with other people uh, when they're trying to find boyfriends or girlfriends or husbands and wives. But it can also interact in, affect how they interact with people for jobs. Uh, sometimes patients who are applying for jobs will sit in interviews and will hide their hands or hide their skin or wear high collars and try and prevent other people from seeing the psoriasis that affects their skin. I certainly didn't feel as if I had to keep it a secret from anybody as I was a child, but on the other hand I didn't make a point of telling anybody what it was. I think in order, if in doing that, one is actually justifying how one is 
and there's no need to do that. It would come up in the course of conversation, or if somebody asked a direct question, I would answer it. But I certainly never felt any, any reason to make an excuse for who I was or how I was. There was one time, I do remember, when I was in a car with a, with a, a school friend of mine who, we, we were just sitting in the back and uh, somebody was walking across the zebra crossing in front where we were stopped and uh, this guy had a uh, t-shirt on and he had quite bad psoriasis on his, on his elbows and I remember distinctly my friend saying, you know, really, really negative things, uh, look at that and what does he think he's doing and why doesn't he cover up and things which, and I was kind of, that's very, very nice, thank you very much, as I had already covered up, it was, uh, I mean, I don't think this person realised the effect it was going to have and it, was, it wasn't very nice. Friends, I can remember, because my scalp used to be quite bad, that I would end up with flecks of skin on my um, shoulders. And I can remember some girls, when I came out one day with what it was, laughing because they thought it was bad dandruff. And I thought that was quite ironic, that it was acceptable for me to have a skin condition such as psoriasis. And that meant that, oh, it didn't matter I had flecks of skin on my, on my shoulders. Whereas if I perhaps had known it's dandruff, that would actually have been socially unacceptable. As there is no apparent reason as to why people develop psoriasis, it is impossible to prevent the condition. There are, however, some things that are thought to trigger the disorder, such as being on certain drug treatments, having some kind of skin injury, getting sunburnt, having recently suffered from a chest infection or a sore throat, and, as with many other conditions, being stressed. Everybody sees different types of events as stressful. Perhaps things which I don't consider to be stressful, other people would, and vice versa. And I think it's important as well that different types of stress act as triggers. So, for example, environmental stresses, a change in the weather, it becoming colder or the central heating going on, I find that that will make my psoriasis thicker or it's noticeably more uncomfortable. Five or six years ago, I was going through a particularly harsh time. You know, pe people who were dear to me were, were not very, you know, were, ha were, were suffering in one way or another. And it was a very difficult point and there was no, you know, after that there wasn't a particular increase in, in, in my psoriasis. And yet uh, at other times, you know, uh, uh, I'll just be minding my own business going from day to day and thinking, oh, isn't life great? And suddenly I'll, I'll be thinking, oh, hang on, why is my psoriasis doing this? So I think although... Uh, it, some people find that that hasn't been the case with me. Uh, it doesn't seem to coincide with stressful times. I, I remember when I was in medical school, every professional examination, during every professional examination, I used to have flares up again because you know it was very much associated with stress. So any bad happening in the in the family or anything which increased the stress on me, my my disease used to trigger. So, and I remember that when I was young and nine ten years old, none of the doctor explain uh, this aspect of the disease. So uh, the whole focus was just to treat the plaques, uh, which is not right. I think for a patient, you need to address the other aspects of the disease as well, uh, like, like stress, I'd say. Living with psoriasis can be both physically and emotionally frustrating, not to mention distressing. The plaques tend to itch incessantly, and if scratched, they can become cracked and sore, especially if they bleed. So, as well as the physical aspect of coping with this condition, sufferers can also find themselves subject to bouts of depression and loneliness as they struggle to cope with low self-esteem. One of the things they really feel is um, distress about their appearance and the fact that they see lesions and spots coming up on different areas of their body. I think one of the biggest things for patients is what clothes they can wear and this is particularly difficult in summer whereas the women won't wear skirts and men find it difficult to wear shorts um, and this constant feeling of having to hide and hide away their psoriasis um, I think this has a big impact on them meeting, meeting friends and meeting people and coming into contact with new people tend to avoid situations where uh, I'm exposing my psoriasis and that's that's really not not a great uh, a great thing because uh, one of the things that's very very good for psoriasis that helps improve the condition of psoriasis is is sunlight and uh, you know although I'm much less self-conscious now about my psoriasis than I was uh, I still do occasionally you know use longer sleeves than I perhaps otherwise would 
And of course, the more I, I cover up, the less sunlight is going to get onto the psoriasis. And the less sunlight that's on there, the more the psoriasis is going to thrive. So it's a, a catch-22. I remember when I was in college, I was always, uh, I always avoided not to wear shorts, not to wear makers because my psoriasis on me was really bad. And I never went swimming. And till today, I, I don't know how to swim. It's just because of psoriasis, I would say, because you know, even if the, uh, y you feel confident about your disease, but it's the other people who matters and the social interaction that matters a lot. So I've had some unusual comments from teachers. There was one teacher who, uh, in front of an entire class, when I could have been no more than 11 or 12, it must have been during the summer because I was wearing a short summer uniform, asked me whether or not I had foot and mouth disease because it was quite possible for humans to catch it apparently and there was nothing for me to be embarrassed about if I had it. So in front of an entire class I had to tell her what was wrong with me. Um, and I suppose having something, anything as a child which appears to set you apart from others teaches you to grow up very quickly. And the irony is, is that so often you end up having to be more mature than the adults around you. Patients who have psoriasis often have very much lowered self-esteem. And we know that some patients with psoriasis have had very unfortunate experiences. For example, I've had patients who've gone to swimming pools and they've been asked to leave the swimming pool because the pool attendant fears that the patient with psoriasis may be infectious. I've also had patients who've gone into changing rooms in department stores to try on clothing and the shopping assistant has asked them to leave the shop and not try on the clothing because they're worried that the patient may infect or affect the clothing. Psoriasis affects about 2% of the population in the United Kingdom. There is no gender discrimination, so there are just as many male sufferers as there are female sufferers. Neither is the condition dependent on age. Psoriasis tends, however, to make its first appearance between the ages of 10 and 40, most commonly during the teenage years. It is very rare to see a child under the age of 2 suffering from psoriasis, but as many as 1 in 50 children are affected by the condition. It tends to affect two different age groups. It's usually young adults and middle-aged individuals it's rare for people to have psoriasis in childhood and it usually starts in adolescence or early adulthood. Also, you can have psoriasis in your uh, middle-aged years, but psoriasis can affect any age and we do have children who have psoriasis and we do have elderly patients who have psoriasis for the first time. 10% of patients who have psoriasis can get an arthritis associated with their psoriasis. It's called psoriatic arthropathy. Usually it's very mild and it just affects the hands, but sometimes it can affect other joints too. I have both psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, and with the psoriasis developing when I was 11, um, the psoriatic arthritis developed in my mid to late 20s, although it took some time before a correct diagnosis was given of what that was. I had a pretty good idea of what it was, but unfortunately the doctors didn't seem to be quite as aware as I was. If it's raining outside and that good old old wives tale that you can feel it in your joints is true, so I think perhaps anyone with an inflammatory form of arthritis would be able to tell you, you can feel the weather coming before it actually happens. As yet, there is no cure for psoriasis, but many people experience long periods when their condition seems to become more manageable or even clears up altogether. This can happen all by itself or because their lives are less stressful. But most people find that some kind of medical treatment has helped them. Prescribed treatment for psoriasis includes skin softeners, tar preparations, emollients, vitamin A and D derivatives, topical drug therapy, steroids and diphenol preparations all depending on the severity of the condition. Patients are advised to consult their doctor, who can draw up a treatment plan. It is important that the patient follows this plan and the instructions from the doctor in order for the treatment to work. During treatment of a flare-up, patients often benefit from the therapy and their psoriasis tends to improve rapidly. Studies have shown that patients who have followed a four-week treatment plan 
have fewer flare-ups per year. When a patient comes to see me with psoriasis, I'll sit down, explain about the nature of psoriasis and try my very hardest to empower that patient to be aware of what psoriasis is, what it might mean, how it might progress and what they can expect. I'll then get into a dialogue with the individual and explain about the range of treatment. And the range of treatment includes ointments and creams, sometimes it's sunlight treatment, and sometimes it's tablets or even injections for psoriasis. Usually the tablets or the injections for psoriasis are reserved for patients who have very severe disease or patients who have not responded to other treatments. It's really important to remember there are very, very good treatments that are available today. Uh, it's not the same as, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago when I first started using uh, creams. You know, they were always very smelly and very difficult to apply. You had to, I mean, I remember distinctly having towels across my pillow because I had to wear this ridiculous greasy stuff that I had to keep in the fridge and it went off after an amount of time and it stunk and it was, you know, it was very horrible. Uh, I think everybody who has psoriasis has, uh, has friends who will say acupuncture is the best thing for you or Chinese herbal remedy is the best thing or you know, this uh, going to the Dead Sea is the best thing for you. And all these people come up with you know, all ways in which they know somebody who's instantly had all their psoriasis cured. Uh, I've tried some and none of these. I've tried some of these and none of these at different times and I have to say I've had no success at all. The only success I've had uh, are really with, with three, three treatments, one of which is normal sunlight. I think that's probably the best of all. Uh, another is uh, the ultraviolet treatment that's available at hospitals. Although the sun and UV light are beneficial for some psoriasis patients, the most commonly used treatments are topical creams or gels, which are applied directly to the affected areas of the skin. In recent years, new topical treatments have become available. An ointment consisting of a vitamin D3 analogue and a corticosteroid preparation has proven to be fast-acting, effective and safe for long-term use. I think nurses can help. Um, particularly by having time to discuss the psoriasis with the patient, go through it, explain that the treatment that's going to be done isn't a cure, but is actually a treatment to help the psoriasis get to the level where they can live a normal life and just have the psoriasis there on the side. Um, so nurses need to be able to listen to the patients, hear what they say about their disease, and help teach them to apply the treatments and explain how treatments can go on, when they should go on, how to take them off, how to use their moisturisers and when to use treatments. Studies have shown that stress can make psoriasis worse. But apart from limiting the amount of stress in their daily lives, what else can patients do to control their symptoms? We know that if you have psoriasis, it's really important to stop smoking and to try and keep alcohol to a minimum. There, is some there are some people that suggest that having more fish in your diet, especially oily fish, will help with psoriasis. The reason for this is that the oily fish sometimes contains anti-inflammatories which help to control the psoriasis. Other than that, there is no great evidence that diet has any influence on the outcome of your psoriasis. Over the past few years, psoriasis treatments have improved. Living with the condition is still a challenge, but many patients are still able to live full and active lives despite their psoriasis. The more patients know and understand about their condition and the treatments available, the easier it is to accept and live with psoriasis. Hi James, can I have five Hi. minutes? Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. James, I just wanted to ask about that patient awareness pack, mm. psoriasis patient awareness yeah. pack, uh, the passport. So do you have got something? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is there, yeah, psoriasis right. will, will be there with me, you know, in the entire my life, I know that. But definitely with now all of this education and awareness, um, I have learned how to manage it. And it's very, very well controlled, very well managed. It's just because uh, I know the various other factors that are involved with the psoriasis and just not treating the plaques with the tubes. I'm also taking care of many other factors, like I try to be relaxed most of the time. 
I do exercise, I play sports, I take more and more water, I refrain from smoking, I, I try to spend my vacations with my family, you know, to be happy, you know, so I, I try to uh, use some stress relieving techniques. I think the message that non-sufferers need to have is that psoriasis isn't contagious, it's not something you're going to catch off somebody. Uh, and although it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have s sympathy and concern, I think often people just want to go, want to more or less ignore the fact that they have psoriasis. So it's, it's just about, I suppose it's just about sensitivity and, you know, uh, often it's better not to say, oh, what's that? It's just better to, to kind of just understand that people are quite happy you know, minding their own business about psoriasis, particularly when they're the sufferers. Well, this thing is going to be with me all the time. Until some brilliant scientist comes up with a cure, it will always be with me. Therefore, my choice is to work out how I find best to manage it. And even though perhaps doctors might look at it and think we could get it more under control and have it better, my view is, but I live with it on a daily basis. They are trying their hardest and they will see me effectively each time I go to hospital to see a different doctor as an acute presentation. They can only treat me with what they see in front of them at the time. That's all the information they have together with my background. But I am the one who knows that tomorrow perhaps my psoriasis will look completely different. In fact, it may look even different that the afternoon after an appointment. It changes so much and so quickly that I prefer to take the view of how do I keep it on an even keel more often than have the peaks and troughs that are sometimes associated with the more extreme forms of treatment.